.NET workers are the modern, efficient and lightweight way to create a Windows services. And in this video, I'll show you how to do it. Welcome along or welcome back to our channel. My name is Chris Roberts. And in this video, I will show you how to create a new .NET Core worker service using the .NET CLI, edit it in Visual Studio Code, add some basic logging, and then install it in Windows as a service. Let's go. So from my command line, I'm first going to make sure that I have the correct .NET SDK installed. Anything above .NET Core 3.1 will do the trick. So let's go .NET dash dash version. And we can see we're running version five, which is fine. So I'm going to run the command .NET new worker and then dash N for name. I'm going to call it .NET Windows Service Demo. Now I'll change directory into my .NET Windows Service Demo folder and then run code dot to open Visual Studio Code in this folder. Chris in the future here, just jumping in to tell you if you're using Visual Studio, you can achieve the same thing through the Visual Studio user interface. From the home page, select create new project, then search for worker service, select the worker service template and then click next. Enter a name for your service project. Finally, you can select the target SDK. I'll use .NET 5 for this and now click create. The resulting project will be the same as if you'd use .NET new from the console. Now I have another video which goes into further detail about the structure of the .NET worker template project, which you can check out somewhere up here. However, let's have a quick look at what our project contains. So we have a program.cs file where we can see that we have essentially just an enhanced console app project with dependency injection set up. Our worker class is added as a hosted service into the container. So let's have a look at the worker.cs file. We can see this is just a simple class based on the background service base class. The constructor requests an iLogger from the container, which is just .NET Core's built-in logging interface. And we have an execute async task. This is called once and then just starts a while loop, which just waits a second between executions and just writes a log message saying the current time. You can, of course, make your service as complex as you like. You could use this to pull a web service, perhaps, or pull system information back. But for this example, we're just going to keep it really simple and stick with the out of the box. What we can do, however, is hook into application lifecycle events, such as startup and shutdown of the service. And we do this by overriding a couple of methods in our base class. So we'll just jump in here and we'll override the start async. And of course, this is called when the application starts up our background service. And we'll just write out a log message, log information, background service starting up. And we can also hook into our shutdown event using the stop async method. And here we'll just write out background service stopping. And that'll really do, for our example, we just want to show how to install this as a Windows service. So there's no point in getting too complicated with what we're doing in our service. Now, at the moment, our logger is just set up to log out to the console. We, of course, don't have a console in a service, so we need to be able to log out to a file. And for this, I'm going to install the very, very useful SiriLog library, which allows us to pipe the built-in log messages in .NET Core out to files, the console, web services, databases, whatever we like. I've got another video going deep into Serilog, which I'll link up here somewhere. For this example, we'll just set up a really simple logger using a file and console logger. So I'll open up my terminal. And I'll just add a couple of packages. I'll add the Serilog file and console packages using .NET add package serilog.syncs.console. I'll add the file sync package. And so I can hook into the .NET Core host builder. I'll add the Serialog extensions hosting package. I'll pop a link down below and up here somewhere to my other video, which goes into more detail about these packages and how to use them. Now let's head over to our program.cs file and set up our logger. So let's add a new using statement using Serialog. And inside my main before my create host builder, I need to set up the path to my log file. I'd like my service to have its own folder, so I'll use the Windows program data directory. So I'll assign that to prog data. I'll get the path using environment dot get folder path, and then I'll use the environment dot special folder dot common application data enum. Now I can create my logger, so I'm going to use log dot logger 
equals new logger configuration. And this is a Fluent API that allows us to stack multiple different log targets on top of each other. So I'll use write to console first, and then I'll write to file. I want to use path, and we'll add the system.io namespace for that. Combine prog data. Let's call our folder course demos. And then we'll call this file service log.txt. And then finally, to create the logger, we'll use create a logger. Now that's created a serialog logger, but in order to register this as a service in the .NET Core container, we just need to come down and we need to add the use serialog extension method on our create host builder call. And that's kind of it for what our service is going to do. However, what we have here is really just a fancy console app. We can't install this as a Windows service just yet because Windows services have special capabilities that allow Windows to control them using the service console, such as starting, stopping, disabling them, and so on. But thankfully, setting it up as a Windows service is a really simple task. We just need to add another NuGet package. So we'll go to our terminal again. So we'll run .NET, add package, Microsoft, .extensions, .hosting, .windows services package. And back in our program CS file, setting this up as a Windows server is as simple as adding an extension method to our create host builder. We'll call use Windows service. And that's it. We can now publish this application and install it as a Windows service. So from our terminal, let's use the .NET publish command. We want to output our published files to a folder and we'll call it publish. So we'll use the dash O for output and put them in publish. We want to configure this as release, so we'll use dash C, release. And finally, if we're going to distribute this service, we don't want to have to ship the whole .NET runtime with it. So we'll create a self-contained build, and we'll target the Windows x86 environment using dash R, and we'll use the win dash x86 flag. You can, of course, target x64 or ARM64, Linux64, and so on. Of course, if it was on Linux, it won't work as a Windows service. And then finally, we'll tell MS build to create a single file self contained build using publish single file is true. I'll run this. Chris from the future here again, just to tell you that if you're using Visual Studio, you can achieve the same thing through the user interface. Head over to your solution explorer, right click the project and select publish. Under the publish window, we want to select folder and then click next. Choose an output location for your published files. In this case, the default is underneath the bin folder. Now click Finish. We can tweak the settings for publishing by clicking More Settings. We can select the Deployment Mode, either Framework Dependent, which means that the .NET runtime has to exist on the client's machine, or Self Contained, where we ship all the dependencies with our project. We can select the target runtime. In this case, we'll choose x86. Under File Publish Options, we can select Produce Single File, to keep the published files to a minimum. Finally, we can click Save and then Publish. The resulting published files will be the same as if we'd used .NET Publish from the console. So to install this, I need to head over to my command line, which should be running as administrator. Remember, we're installing a Windows service here. So when we do this from the command line, it needs to be running with administrator privileges. So from my command line, I'm going to use the SC or service control .exe, which is on the Windows path, so we can just call this from anywhere. And then I'm going to use the create command, and then we need to specify the name of our service. So it's .NET Windows Service Demo. And then we need to provide the path to the executable that Windows will use as the service. So we'll provide bin path equals, and then paste the path to our built exe, which is under publish, and then .NET Windows Service Demo .exe. We can run this and we can see that our create service has succeeded. So let's bring up our services list and take a look. So here we have our services list. Let's take a look for .NET, and there we see our .NET Windows Service Demo ready to be started. We can right click and click Start, and Windows will start up our service. So now if we go and check in our program data what we specified our service log to be, we should see a file with some log messages in it. So let's bring up our course demos folder, in program data, and there we have our service log.txt file. Let's open this up, and we can see that our worker is running. 
we have our starting up message and our worker is running every second or so. Let's close this down, go back to our services and then stop the service. If we check back in our service log file and look down at the bottom, we'll see that our application shutting down and background service stopping messages have been written properly. This means that if we need to perform the startup and tear down code when the service is started and stopped, we can do so with confidence. So that was how to create a Windows service quickly and easily using the .NET worker template. I hope you found this useful. I'll put a link to a playlist somewhere here where I go into .NET Core workers and scheduling and so on in much more detail. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do drop a like. And if you like this kind of content, then please do consider subscribing and tap that bell icon so you never miss out on one of our videos. Thank you so much for watching. Happy coding. And we'll see you next time.